All right, we're going to move to our next segment now, and uh, we've got a magnificent couple on the stage here. You might recognise them as uh, Nigel and Susie Picknell. How are you going, guys? Hi, how are you going? Yeah, you good, looking thanks. good? good. <laughs> Feeling good? Feeling good. Feeling comfortable in this format? No. no. <laughs> are you worried I'm going to ask you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, keep the mics up nice and close. Look, with just a little bit of background, Nigel, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the music in a moment. Just tell us, uh, what an, is an anaesthetic technician? You had a, a go at that a few years ago, so tell us about that. Um, an anaesthetic technician, uh, I worked at Knox Private, and I started as a technician there, which is basically someone that works in the operating theatre and uh, sets up the things for the operation, but uh, eventually moved on to assisting the anaesthetist, so you set up. You assist okay. him during the operation, and you also just anything that the meat needs doing out of the uh, the uh, sterile field okay. is what your job is. So, so if you videos. don't get it right, can somebody die at your hand? Is that ah uh, yes, I suppose, but uh, it okay. wasn't. Uh, so you got to. I just point to the, to the to the professionals and say it was their fault. <laughs> That's the way to go. <laughs> so these days, Nigel, you're um you're a builder, yes, you know, and you've uh, done a bit of work at various people that I know at their homes. One of the things that you're renowned for is not just the quality of your work, but also for the fact that you, you love to pre-set up your morning tea <laughs> location. So, so tell us how that sort of pans out. Well, it, it, it is important. You want to make sure that you've got a nice spot, nice view, yep. nice cool spot to sit and okay. set up your stuff. Because I noticed when you came yep. to our place a few years ago, you put a great deal into time, into, you know, you get your esky and your chair and it was kind of like you're on holidays, you know, it's, uh, you know. I like to have my break because it means I go full force go full when force I'm working, to, so. In, into sharpening you know, your chisel. I, I see that as important. Too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Susie, um, well, I'm not going to say when you were born because it's written on here, but uh, tell us, you were born in the West Indies. Tell, tell us about that place. Yeah, I was born in the West Indies, a place called Curaçao, a little island there where my father was um, working for a shell refinery company and my mother, my parents are from the Azores, Portugal, and they moved over there and then I was born there and, I came, and we migrated to Australia when I was six months old. Okay, so obviously you don't remember Much about anything it. about that? No. Okay, so, so just tell us. I've got it on good advice from your sister that, that you were kind of just very quiet and, and assuming and, and the good girl of the family whilst the brothers and sisters are getting themselves into trouble. W would you agree with that? or um, for, On the most part because um, I think I learnt from their mistakes okay. <laughs> but I still made a few of my own. Okay, so that means you're just a bit sly perhaps, <laughs> no? Or? Well, I don't know about yeah. that. <laughs> okay, so take us back a little bit. You guys, you, you were, I remember you out at Croydon many years ago. We've already mentioned Pastor Ian McGregor, who's up watching this at the moment. Tell us about how you came. First of all, just we're going to get onto the testimonies in a moment. How did you, Susie, get hold of this man? <laughs> um, well, we met each other um, at Croydon Assembly and we were just friends and we just developed a good friendship together. We'd both been through... A um, bit of hard times and so we were both sort of able to um, talk about a lot of stuff and just become really good friends and we went to camps and um, yeah, just flourished. Okay. And who made the move? He did. I was <laughs> going to say she did. But, uh. Okay. So was there anything about that move? Because obviously in the rock world, everyone wants to marry a drummer. As, as, as the, Nigel is the main drummer for the Eddie Cole band in the church and chorus player, has that got anything to do with your attraction to Nigel? Or? Um, yeah, I suppose he was just an all-round good guy. And yep. um, the funny little story is at one of these camps, I remember we went on a hike up to this tall mountain and stuff, and then we sort of, I'm sort of, oh, we sit down to have a drink, and he wanted the right spot with the right view, yeah. and I'm thinking, what's wrong with this guy? That's, <laughs> he, was setting up his, he was setting up his morning tea, like <laughs> yes, as a builder. That's right. right. Okay. But anyway, it was just the way he is, he likes the night to make sure it's all nice and comfortable and yep. yeah, something that I, it's okay. endeared him to me. So it was love at first bite. <laughs> love at first bite. Yeah. Right. All right, Susie, just tell us a little bit of your religious background and how you came to 
know about God and receiving the Holy Spirit? Um, my parents were Catholic. Um, and but when we migrated here, we didn't go to church. But my father would um, quote the Bible, and we were, we would, my mother would talk about stories of how she'd prayed to God, and things had worked out. And so we did believe in God, and were really strong on that. But we didn't go to church. So um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. And what about you? What's your background when it comes to God? Um. I could say that I didn't really believe in the God of the Bible at all, really. I could see that uh, I went to funerals and things like that and I just felt that the, um, whenever they said things about the person, it didn't seem to, to uh, be right. So um, it was only when I was, I, was, I was doing the usual things in the world, playing in a band and I was um, into drugs a little bit and, and alcohol. And it was only when someone who was, was actually someone from the church told me about the Bible and they had the Holy Spirit within them, and I could sense that. I could sense that these people had that in them, mm. and they were speaking the truth, and it really made me feel that there was something in it. So uh, eventually I went along, got baptised at Dandenong, yep. and two months later I was up at Emerald Lake, and I kind of knew something was going to happen. I started. I was by myself. It was a mm. nice romantic nice set, uh, night set, <laughs> I was on my own though so mm -hmm. uh, and um, I started uh, seeking for the Lord praying and all of a sudden this tongue came out and it was just like rivers of living water coming out from within me Amen. and I'll never forget that Wonderful. day it was definitely mm. a change from one day to the next yeah our previous speaker Jason Scarlett mentioned the fire God Susie when you received the Holy Spirit did can you sort of connect to the fire gods how, how did you feel and what happened to you um well when i came started coming to the church i um i came with a, a friend um and uh, my sister was already in the church but i brought along a friend and when we were sitting in the meeting um i thought that yeah look this is right but when it came to be called up to be baptized my friend actually put her hand up and she said to me oh, i've put my hand up and i said oh i'll do it too and anyway we went both went through the waters of baptism and on that day i received the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and i um i just knew it was right i never questioned it because i knew how i felt it was real and um yeah and it was mm. I had evidence and so yeah. yeah Nigel just in this COVID-19 world that we're living in now you know you've been in the church a long time you've been a house leader and given many talks what 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 would you advise people to do that are spirit filled at home watching this for example what would you advise them to do to keep close to God uh, I would say just seek the Lord yep as much as you can and read the read the word and um, just find the fire going within you. Uh, it's the best way to put it because it says that the Lord says to draw nigh to him and he'll draw nigh to you. So We're going to let him say that again because okay. the mic went off. So what advice would you give to people? I would, I would say, look, just to draw nigh to the Lord, to, to, um, to seek the Lord as much as possible. As I was just saying, um, hmm. if you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. And uh, I think that's what we've got to do we can yeah. still be a testimony with other people we have the holy spirit within us so yeah um and that's one thing that gets you fired up is when you can talk to someone else about the lord amen all right susie your last question the, the question you've been fearing most of all what is it that you love about nigel the most um his integrity um i know what you see is what you get and um he's about the truth always wants the truth and um you know, and um, yeah, that's the one thing that, one of the things that I um, admire about him. Yeah. I don't see it in him, but <laughs> no, no. And what I meant to say is that, uh, yeah, okay. You're a beautiful man, Nigel. Okay. And just finally, you know, do you like 4 4, 5 8, or 3 4 best when you're playing the drums? Uh, 3 4. 3 4 is a 3 4 man. So those that don't understand music, that is like, um, what's a song? Of course. Okay. All right. What's a song? That's it. See, See I've, I've stumped you now, You're so stumped. forget it. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> anyway, look, thank you guys for being here. And uh, thank you for encouraging the Revival Centre Church wider audience. I appreciate that. Okay. Absolute pleasure. All right, we're going to uh, move to our next segment. And we thank Nigel and Susie for their encouragement and also the fact that uh, they were their great candour. 
And as you can see, they're very thrilled to be born again. And that's what it's all about. It's not about just uh, joining a church. It's about joining the body. And that's the body of Christ, the temple of the living God. And uh, we can praise the Lord that uh, we have people in the revival centres like Nigel and Susie Picknell.